Hello everyone, my name is Logan and welcome back to the lecture hall. Today we are covering section 6.1, the areas between two curves, um, and this is for our UCI Math 2B section uh, that I started, you know, ages ago. I'm finally back on it, cool. So today we want to find the area between two curves. Let's say we have f of x as that's going to be our red area, and then we have g of x as our blue area, and we want to find the area in between. So if we just look at our curves and just fill in the area, we can get a better idea of where to start from. So if we fill the area of f of x, that's going to be everything just below f of x, but then stops at the x-axis, correct? And then we look at g of x. Well, that's going to be anything below g of x and stops at the x-axis. So we'll get some overlap here and it kind of you know, blue and red makes purple, and then we see, well, hey, it just looks like these are separate areas, right? It almost looks like we could subtract them, right? Because we have our red area, and then our now purple area, or purple, I guess red and blue, and then red, and we just want red, but the red goes through the entire thing, so if we just get rid of the blue from it, then we have pure red, which is what we want, right? So it turns out all we really have to do to find the area is to subtract the two curves and then do integrals. So we have that definition, uh, but that purely only works for when f of x is always greater than or equal to our g of x. What if we have uh, an intersection of two curves such that one curve is the larger uh, curve at the beginning, but then it becomes the lower curve later in the end? Here we have y equals cosine of x and y equals sine of x, and we want to find the area between the two curves. Well, that would be this section where sine is bigger, and then we have, er, my apologies, cosine is bigger, and then we have this section, this red section where sine is bigger. And we're like, well, how do we find the area of these two? And I will give you three seconds to write in the comments, pause the video if you want, if you want to guess. Three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna use absolute values. So we get another definition that is a more uh, general version of our previous definition that states the area between y equals f of x and y equals g of x between x equals a and x equals b is equal to, well, the area from a to b of the absolute value of f of x minus g of x dx. And so this will make it so that no matter where we are on our curve, we will always get a positive answer. We'll never get a negative area um, because we have this absolute value to um, fix it. So now let's go through this problem and let's actually find the area between y equals cosine of x and y equals sine of x from zero to pi over two. Well, we know we're going to have to use the area is equal to a to b absolute value of f of x minus g of x dx. So we can start with that and we can say we know area is equal to from 0 to pi over 2 absolute value of f of x minus g of x. Close absolute value bar, dx. Never forget the dx. We want to find the area and we may not be comfortable with absolute values quite yet. How absolute values work is what you do is you find the region where the region is negative and then you just subtract the negative thus making it positive like we do for normal absolute values in algebra. Um, here is a little different but we know we have two regions so it's going to be broken up into two separate integrals. So we get area is equal to a1 plus a2, and these are just placeholders for right now until I write out the full equation, but we need to find where they intersect because that is where our bounds are going to split. We have to find where they intersect to find where their bounds split, and we know because we've taken pre-calculus before that uh, cosine of x and sine of x uh, intersect at pi, equals, uh, at, at pi over 4, so we can say our bounds split between 0 to pi over 4, and then from pi over 4 to pi over 2, and we just make this pi over 4 to pi over 2 region 
negative, and that will flop our, which is our higher curve and which one is our lower curve. So we can then find that the area for this equation is equal to 0 to pi over 2 for cosine x minus sine x dx plus integral, that should be pi over 4. I said pi over 4 multiple times and then wrote pi over 2 and probably said pi over 2. So, uh, and then this is from pi over two, 4 to pi over 2. And then we have to remember, oop, I put plus, but this would be a negative area if our y was on the bottom, right? So we thus have to make this plus a negative, subtracting it, thus making the absolute value uh, positive. So we just put, plug the same thing in, cosine x minus sine x dx, and we can just do this integral. This is a very, or do these two integrals, I should say. These are very simple integrals. Well, we know the integral of cosine is, is sine, and we know the integral of negative sine is cosine, so we find that the area of this is just equal to sine x plus cosine x from 0 to pi over 4, and then this one is minus a, well, sine x plus a cosine x, because it's the same integral, it's the same function inside, and we just make that minus, so then it's minus cosine x minus sine x from 0, or er, from pi over 4 to pi over 2. And then we've all done pre-calculus before, so this is very easy to calculate our bounds. Uh, sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2, however you want to see it. 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2. Then we have to subtract, well, sine of 0 is 0. Sine of, uh, cosine of 0 is a 1, and then subtract, so negative 1, minus, well, cosine of pi over 2, so that would be minus another 1, minus another 0, and then now plus, because these are negative, and this bound now is the subtraction, so it becomes positive, plus another 1 over root 2, plus 1 over root 2, and we find, well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 root 2s. Well, that just turns into 2 root 2 minus 2 because there are two negative ones. I mean, two zeros as well, but those are trivial. They're 0. And we find that the area between cosine of x and sine of x on the region 0 to pi over 2 is just equal to 2 root 2 minus 2. So for finding areas between two curves, it's actually quite simple. All you have to do is take your top function, subtract it from the area of the bottom function, and you can find the regions. It gets a little harder when you have uh, functions that swap which one is the taller and which one's smaller, um, but all you have to do then is just break your function into multiple um, separate bounded functions so that the absolute value is still positive. Uh, that is all for the lesson today. As always, my name was Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.